Tomikust. Good morning, dear friends. May I grab your attention, please? Um, good morning. Nice to see you all here. Uh, to start with this wonderful morning, and I'm so happy to see so many of you. Uh, I can see some, a couple of free seats in the front as well. Some of you who are very courageous can come up here. Uh, but to start this uh, wonderful sunny day and uh, Tallinn Music Week 2014, the first person and a very special person I want to introduce to you is the President of Estonia, Mr. Thomas Henrik Ilves. Good morning. I've never seen so many people here. I guess there must be a reason. Not me. Once again, it's time for Tallinn Music Week, certainly one of the most uh, exciting week <coughs> events in Northern Europe. I have, uh, ever since it was begun by Helen Zildna over there, uh, considered one of the most interesting musical events in the region, precisely because it fosters new and innovative thinking. It celebrates diversity in musical tastes, in the creativity of artists who want to do something new and different. As those of you who have heard me in previous years at Tallinn Music Week know, I have a fondness for rock and roll and an equally strong fondness for liberty. For me, the two have always gone hand in hand. Yes, you can in fact have liberty without rock, because already 300 years ago, when the Scottish philosopher John Locke laid the groundwork for the relationship between the individual and the state, back then there was no rock and roll. But in the past 60 years, it has often been rock and roll music that has tested the limits of liberty in societies, the, at least those societies, even in those societies, that consider themselves liberal democracies. In other societies, authoritarian, totalitarian, theocratic, or a combination of these, you don't have to be a rocker to be locked up threatened with prison or even death for saying what you believe. We know this quite well in Estonia, where many people suffered without playing rock, but for speaking the truth. But rockers also suffered. Those of you not from Estonia may find this perhaps odd and difficult to understand, but here, when people wanted to be free, they came together and sang. They sang rock, they sang folk, they sang classical, sometimes they sang religious music. And hard as it may have been to believe back then, it started to work. It worked so well that today all this singing is called the singing revolution. Because after all, the basis of our protest was music. But that misses the point actually, because it's free expression, in our case music, that allowed people to overcome their fear, their fear of repression, the consequences of singing or speaking their mind. Music, like other forms of art, does that. This is why the arts are often the first to suffer and also the most vulnerable to repression because behind any act of real art, and I'm not talking about state-sponsored, state-initiated so-called art, of which we have all kinds of examples left over from the Soviet Union here, but real art, any act of real art is a denial of the status quo. It threatens the status quo, because otherwise it would be just the same boring stuff. But art is art when it does something differently, creates something new, and that always, a priori, by definition, will threaten the status, status quo. When Estonia's greatest living composer, Arvo Pärt, 
wrote his genre changing music here in Estonia in the 1970s under Soviet occupation, it was too different, too out of the mainstream. It was considered too subversive that he had to be silenced. He was no longer allowed to earn a living here, and he was forced to emigrate. And of course, once he moved to the West and could live in freedom, both spiritual and artistic, he became a legend and has been changing the face of serious music ever since. Nor has he given up his conscience, having dedicated his fourth symphony to Mikhail Khodorkovsky. With rock and roll, it is more difficult, as rock has always challenged the more fundamental beliefs of society. When Beethoven brought dissonance and syncopation into his second symphony, also known as Eroica, it did upset listeners in a concert hall in Vienna, but the rest of the burghers in Austria didn't really know much about it. Rock and roll, with its huge audience and its in-your-face attitude, managed to offend from the beginning, right from the beginning, with Elvis Presley's hip-pumping censured on television. When a little more than 10 years later, John Lennon said the Beatles were more popular than Jesus Christ, rallies were held to burn the Fab Four's records which showed that when you offend popular sensibilities, people are ready for almost anything, including burning records, which I guess some thought was different from burning books. That, then, is the role played by rock and roll, to offend sensibilities enough to cause people for social attitudes, for government behavior to change. We laugh today at the censorship imposed on Elvis Presley. We laugh that John Lennon could have produced such an outcry. And Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols today does nostalgia tours for people of my generation. I'm 60. <laughs> Sensibilities change, which means that we change. Yet this holds true when we are dealing with societies that value the individual and his or her right to free expression. Where today we see more and more of a clash is where different concepts of the rights of the individual come into conflict. Where societies wish to impose their own, often collectivist concept of rights on other societies, on other people. I think the first example of this in recent times, or modern times, was the fatwa pronounced against Salman Rushdie, who some 30 years ago playfully retold the legends of his own religion in a novel in an artistic and unorthodox way. But some self-appointed arbiters said they were offended and decided he had to be killed, even though he was living far away in a free, liberal, democratic society that was based on freedom of expression. Fearful his own government, that is to say, Salman Rushdie's own government as a British subject, tried to distance itself from him. Since that time, we have seen a number of cases where people who say things make films or draw cartoons or write books that offend some collectivist sensibility, have been killed or marked for death because they say things that supposedly offend one or another group. This strikes at the core of the ideas of the Western Enlightenment, the same Enlightenment whose science and art has enabled us to transcend pre-industrial primitiveness and allows us to produce amplifiers and microphones and records and CDs, videos and YouTube, all of which underlie rock and roll. Others can copy those things, but they can't create it. They can only be created in, in a tradition that values the role of the individual because in order to create, you need to innovate, do things differently from the group, differently from the collective. 
Before the Enlightenment, we believed that the sun circled the earth, and people who said otherwise were tortured or burnt at the stake. Before the Enlightenment, people who were different were accused of being wild and different with, to the wild approval of the collective, and they were burned at the stake. Before the Enlightenment, groupthink outweighed the ideas of the lone individual. And this is the ultimate tragedy of authoritarian societies. You kill creativity, you kill the spark of life and culture of science. You kill your scientists, you kill your artists. And in doing so, you kill your society and also the chance to change. Pardon me for being so serious when I'm, even myself, I keep hearing in the back of my head Mick Jagger singing a song from when I was 40 years ago in my 30 year, third year of college uh, singing, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. But it isn't only rock and roll. It is also Arthur Rambeau and Ezra Pound. It's Arnold Schoenberg and Vladimir Mayakovsky. It's Lou Reed and Salman Rushdie and Robert Mapplethorpe. When collective belief systems, be, the, <clears throat> be they Marxism, Leninism, fascism, or one or another religion that thinks it is, has the unique key to truth, have more say than the lone individual, the result, this tragedy, and the end of any hope for democracy, for freedom, or for any real art of any type. So I wish Tallinn Music Week success. I'm proud of this event, which has gotten me in so much trouble for standing up for freedom, more, in fact, than any other thing I've actually done which of course is a tiny piddly drop compared to the ocean of suffering endured by those that I have stood up for throughout my life. And who, whatever their art form, whatever their form of expression, have my undying and eternal respect. I speak about these perhaps two abstract notions because freedom is not an abstraction it is the basis of our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mr. President. Um, this was a meaningful moment, as it always is when he speaks. Um, the next uh, special person I want to introduce to you um, represents an organization and a company uh, who has a very big impact in Estonia for um, caring about culture and arts and not only caring about it, but also taking care of it. Our presenter of uh, Tally Music Week from this year, um, Nordea Bank, and Mr. Andreas Lane, the head of banking of Nordea. Tervist, damid ja härad, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable President, somewhere he is, all the music fans and enthusiasts. I had a dream when I was about 13 years old. I wanted to perform on uh, small and big stages. I hence wanted to be a singer. My mom at the same time said to me, Andreas, I love you very much. And I know that you have a very nice voice, but uh, please stick to figures. Please. When the mom says please twice and I love you in the same sentence, you better listen to him. And I stuck uh, with figures and I become a banker. One thing, of course, was that I was totally out of tone and didn't have any rhythm as well. So she was, of course, right when giving this advice. But anyhow, today my dream has come true. I'm here on this beautiful stage 
and I'm extremely proud and happy to present uh, Tallinn Music Week in 2014. We all in the bank are uh, very happy to be linked with Tallinn Music Week, the biggest showcase festival in the entire Baltic and Nordic region. We feel lucky to be part of this amazing event. Our mutual history is actually still in baby steps, uh, but I feel that uh, we will have long and long years in front of us. And why? The why is that we have the same values. Norda believes very much in free values. We believe that strong teams create positive and en engaging environments. We feel that great relationships secure the future. And we know that people make the difference. And I really feel that the same values also has Stalin Music Week and all the team that is managing it. And uh, this, of course, has been the reason why Tallinn Music Week has grown into a big success in so short time. Tallinn Music Week is not only an Estonian event, but it's also an event that um, brings international success into our culture and, and music. And I think um, the international success, of course, is very, very important for Estonia as such. So um, being part of this success is a thing that, um, or is a key element in our relationships. One of the topics today is related to the challenges of creating pan-Baltic music um, market and contribution of music into the economic growth in general. I'm sure that uh, all the different people here with different backgrounds, nationalities and culture, with the knowledge sharing, with the failures and success stories, can find very good solutions for the problems of this type. And I'm sure that if we can find a solution for uh, our music export, then actually we can find solutions for all possible problems that could face us. And therefore, of course, I'm very optimistic. Success story of Tallinn Music Week provides inspiration and learning opportunity for uh, many ambitious businesses in Estonia. Six years ago, it was only when Tallinn Music Week started. And in this remarkably short time, it has achieved uh, much more than initially desired. The festival has demonstrated extreme growth. It has grown in scale. It has the highest quality and has very wide influence. Over the years, Stalin Music Week has introduced innovative activities, initiated discussion forums, developed cooperative relationships, and continues to reinvent uh, networking. Every year, Tally Music Week has added something into the program, and now this uh, seminar, I think, is very good add-on. Anyhow, when it comes to Tally Music Week, as, as I said, I can't sing, so I listen to music. And I like the Tally Music very much because it gives an opportunity to listen music that is beyond the traditional, let's say, popular music as such. And this gives, of course, an opportunity to have new ideas, new feelings. And uh, these new feelings are the ones, I think, making people happy. At least they make me happy. And new ideas, of course, bring new innovations. So Tallinn Music Week, thank you for new innovations, very good ideas. And I hope and I know that there will be a great success also in the next coming years. Thank you, Helen. I really encourage you to come in the front and find uh, the seats here. Um, and uh, this, this is a time uh, for me to say a couple of words to you as well. Um, recently, I read a very interesting um, study. And the study was called uh, Creativity and Prosperity, the Global, Global Creativity Index. and. Um, what the study was doing, it was uh, doing a research in uh, four 82 different countries. And the main key things it was studying were 
technology, talent, and tolerance. Uh, of course, it's no surprise that the top 10 of those countries which were um, successful in those criteria were Nordic countries. In the first, uh, first place, it was uh, Sweden, and the second, there was United States, then Finland followed, and Norway, and Denmark, and all of them. And um, I was starting to think about it a bit in a deeper level. Um, when you really start thinking about it, it uh, ac actually all starts making perfect sense when you, when you think about create creative city spaces and locations like be it Berlin or be it Brooklyn or be it somewhere in Copenhagen. You imagine these places and you immediately understand there is some kind of a um, different vibe, some kind of an energy, something is up in the air. And then I somehow, it how, somehow hit me that um, we talk about terms like creative industries, we talk about terms to do with music industry, but um, it somehow hit me that the foundation and the basis for creativity eventually is tolerance. Tolerance to uh, different opinions, different religions, ideas, uh, sexuality, different nationalities, the basis of creativity uh, is the respect for human talent, uh, their self-expression and ideas. And I think when we start, the next time when we start talking about uh, the success of creative industry, be it in Estonia or, or in the example of any other of the countries, I think we have to keep in mind the word tolerance and respect for anybody's ideas or, or, um, or um, self-expression for that matter. At this year's conference we will talk a lot about new business models, marketing, management, copyright and career planning. But I really want uh, this to be a very clear message that would shine through here. Um, many people have, ha have asked me over the um, couple of days, um, due to some of the reasons for what we have in the conference program, that is Tallinn Music Week not only a music festival anymore, um, is this a political festival now? It has been a question I have had to answer. and. Um, my clear answer has always been that um, the basis of um, music and any culture forms is the human right to uh, express themselves freely. And uh, some of you might like to call it politics. I personally call it the very basic human value. And who else than us working in a creative se sector and considering ourselves to be creative people, who else should actually stand up for it, if not us? <laughs> I think, uh, thank you. <laughs> I think in that sense it was actually very beautiful that uh, yesterday we were open able to open up our festival with the anniversary party of a record label called Stupida, who 25 years ago um, released the fir their first ever single, which was uh, Tere Perestroika. <laughs> it was uh, um, released in uh, 1989, still at the time of Soviet Union in uh, Estonia. Um, the single, single was by Jotem Kai, EMKO, as Finns would know it, and by Villo Tamme. And I think it's exactly the same type of a situation. Would we ask today, Villo, are you a politician? No, he was just uh, standing up for his views. And I think it's, it's somehow a beautiful kind of a motive that uh, that record label basically started out by signing an Estonian act, and it was the first European and uh, international record label that was ever able to, to sign an Estonian talent. Um, 
I encourage you all to use this opportunity at Tallinn Music Week to really dig deeper into the meaning of understanding each other. We all know what the situation is right now, and I think for us, uh, the Estonian community living here, we really have to dig deeper also into the layers of really wanting to understand our Russian-speaking community, our Ukrainian community. And I think gathering all up here today gives us that opportunity. And when um, the next people to conquer this stage will be um, the cultural leg legends like Artyom Troitsky and Alexander Cheparuhin from Russia, uh, joined by the girls from Pussy Riot, then please use this opportunity to ask them the questions that you have. Use the opportunity to understand them, to exchange views, and to really understand and respect. We don't have to agree with everything, right? Uh, but we definitely have to um, respect and listen. So th this is basically what my, my hopes are for Tallinn Music Week. Of course, it's still a music festival. It's fun. Um, there are lots of shows and concerts. There are lots of amazing people. I mean, I'm so genuinely happy to see you all here. Um, but uh, eventually, I think uh, we, we really need to take this seriously. We have to stand up for the ideas we believe in, but we also have to have fun. <laughs> and uh, there, there are a couple of um, very special people here I definitely want to point out and say my thanks to. First of all, um, the president of Estonia, and you see the reasons why we really love and respect him, right? <laughs> um, he has always been uh, a role model for standing up for the values of democracy, and I do respect that. And there's another person here I have a huge respect to. He, he sometimes is called, um, uh, well, at the time when he was the Minister of Culture, he was called the Rock Minister at some point, <laughs> Mr. Rain Lung. <laughs> and um, I have to say completely subjectively, he is definitely my favorite Minister of Culture so far. <laughs> he, he has um, helped us a lot by believing the rock and roll culture. We all believe in that. Um, but also, um, when I introduced uh, Andreas Lane here, Nordea Bank, then uh, their views represent something in a society which is very important. If you want creativity ex to exist in your society, then you have to nurture it, value it, but you also have to invest in it. This creates the type of a society that we all want to live in. And thank you for Nordea Bank in actually doing that in Estonia in a beautiful way. As always, we're happy to be, be here at uh, Nordic Hotel Forum, which has been our home for us for six years already. We thank our wonderful partners, Estonia Mobile Phone and Skype, and um, InfoAuto and Saku and Tuborg. But my biggest thanks uh, again goes to my wonderful team, who is basically my second, sometimes even my first family. <laughs> uh, so they are all amazing people. And um, I really want you all to come and meet us, all of us to talk, all of us to understand each other this week and have fun. This catalogue here, by the way, is something that you definitely, all of you need. It describes everything you need to do over the weekend. There are 17 best restaurants in town we recommend you to see. There are concerts in atmospheric cafes and city spaces. There is, of course, the festival that contains 224 artists all over the world. So basically, experience um, everything you can in Tallinn. And um, my message is, let's just love each other. <laughs> Thank you. And now there is 10 minutes before the panel starts here. 
Uh, let's grab another glass of sparkling wine and Tele Music Week 2014 is open. <laughs> Let's go. 